Now we have solved and graphed inequalities in the past, but today we are going to graph linear inequalities with two variables, an x and a y. Now when you have an inequality with two variables, you have multiple solutions, and we graphically represent those on a coordinate plane by using a shaded area. So when you're looking at a graph of an inequality, the shaded area represents all the potential solutions to the inequality. If the line of the inequality is solid, each point on that line is also considered part of the solution. So in this particular inequality, y is less than or equal to negative 2x, this point on the line, 1, negative 2, is part of my solution to this inequality. If the line is dashed, that means no point on the line is part of the solution. All right. Before we actually graph, let's see if we can identify if points on a graph are part of the solution to this inequality. And here's how you're going to do this. Is the point 4, 0 part of the solution? Well, I'm going to plot the point 4, 0 on my graph. And as you can see, it falls in the shaded area. Remember, the shaded area represents the solution set. So yes, this 4, 0 is part of my solution. Now I'm going to graph negative 2, 4. Notice that it falls outside the solution area. So no, it is not part of the solution. 0, 0. It is inside the shaded area, so yes, it is part of the solution. All right. To graph an inequality with two variables, you're going to do three things. The very first thing that you are going to do is make sure your equation is in slope-intercept form, or your inequality, I should say. It should look like y equals mx plus b, except instead of an equal sign, there's going to be an inequality sign. If it is not in slope-intercept form, you have to solve for y. The second step that you're going to do is graph the inequality using your y-intercept, which is 0b, remember, and then using your slope as rise over run, sorry, to come up with other points. Now, one of the things that is unique about inequalities is if you have y is less than or y is greater than, you are going to use a dashed line to indicate that anything on that line is not part of your solution. If you have y is greater than or less than or great, excuse me, less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, then you're going to use a solid line to indicate that any point on that line is a part of your solution. And the last thing that you're going to do is you're going to shade the part of the graph that represents the solution. And here's how you can tell what that is. You are going to look at your y-intercept. And you're going to say, um, if it is y is greater than or y is greater than or equal to, you shade everything above to the side of the graph that is above the y-intercept. If you have y is less than or y is less than or equal to, you're going to go to your y-intercept and you're going to shade the part of the graph that is below the y-intercept. All right, let's try one of these. I would like you to graph the inequality y equals 4x minus 3. Well, I can see that this is in slope-intercept form.
so I do not have to do step number one, which is solve for y. So now I'm going to just say, what type of line am I going to use, dashed or solid? And to answer that, I am going to look at my y and my inequality. This says y is less than. Since I don't have a less than or equal to, this is going to be a dashed line. And I'm not going to I'm going to ask you to actually write down the word dashed so you remember to make your line dashed. Now, I'm also going to ask you to identify what type of shading are you going to shade above or below the y intercept? Since this says y is less than, you are shading below the y intercept. All right. Now, let's identify our slope of this equation. It is a 4. I'm going to change it into 4 over 1, so I can have rise over run. The 4 is positive, so it tells me to go up. The 1 is positive, so it tells me to go to the right. And then my y-intercept is 0, negative 3. So I'm going over to my graph, and I'm going to find my y-intercept of 0, 3, and make a nice big fat point there. Then I'm going to use my slope of up 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, over 1, up 4, over 1. Oops, I'm going to scooch it down a little bit. 1, 2, 3, 4. And I'm going to do as many of these as I need. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. To make a really nice graph. Then I'm going to get my line tool. You're going to use your straight edge. and I'm going to graph this line. All right, now this is a dashed, so I've got to make my line dashed. Now you can just draw a dashed line I have to actually erase. Now I have to figure out my shading. I am shading below my y-intercept, so I'm going here to my y-intercept and I have to shade down this way. So the entire graph that's on this side gets to be shaded. Now, I'm going to answer this question. Is negative 3, 2 a solution to this inequality? Well, let's graph negative 3, 2. And that point does not fall in the shaded area. So no, this is not part of my solution. Is 1, 1. So, let's go over here and graph 1, 1. Well, as you can see, it falls right on the dashed line. Remember, dashed lines are never part of the solution. So, this is no, not part of my solution either. All right. Let's try another one. What if I give you x plus 2y is greater than or equal to 0? Well, as you can see, this is not in slope-intercept form, so I'm going to write this equation over here. x plus 2y is greater than or equal to 0, and I'm going to solve it for y. Subtract x from both sides. I get 2y is greater than or equal to negative. I'm going to put a 1 in front of that lonely variable plus zero. I don't have to write down that zero, so I'm not going to. Then I'm going to divide by two. And I'm going to get y is greater than or equal to negative one-half x. All right. Well, now I need to figure out what type of line I'm going to draw. So I'm going to look at my inequality. This says y is greater than or equal to. Since I have that equal to, I know this is going to be a solid line. And then I need to determine how I'm going to shade this. Since it's y is greater than, I am going to shade above the y-intercept. Now my slope in this particular equation is negative one half. That means I'm going to go down one to the right two. 
and my y-intercept. Well, there is no y-intercept. Remember, I erased it. It was zero. So the y-intercept, if there's nothing there, is zero, zero. So I'm going to go over to my graph, and I'm going to plot a nice big fat point at the y-intercept of zero, zero. And then I am going to use my slope, which says go down one to the right two, down one to the right two, down one to the right two, and so on, until I get enough to make a nice graph. Then I'm going to get my straight line tool, turn it, Didn't do a very good job there, and I'm going to make a line and it's solid. Now I have to figure out which way to shade. So I'm going to go to my y-intercept and I'm saying anything above this. So to the side of the line that is above the y-intercept. Now I'm going to look at my point negative 3, 2. So I'm going to go negative 1, 2, 3 and 1, 2. Notice it's just inside the shaded area. So I would say, yes, this is part of my solution. All right. So you rewrite. You figure out what type of line you use. You figure out which way you need to shade. You identify your slope and your y-intercept. And you graph your inequality and shade it. What if I get something like this? Now you should know immediately that y is greater than or equal to negative 3 is a horizontal line with a slope of 0. And it crosses the y-axis at 0, negative 3. Okay, let's figure out what kind of line we have. This is y is greater than or equal to, so the equal to means it's going to be a solid line. Now let's figure out our shading. y is greater than is a shade above. So I'm going to shade above this line at the y-axis, or the y-intercept, sorry. Now, my slope is 0. And my y intercept is 0, negative 3. I've already determined that. So I'm going to go over here to negative 3, put a big dot. Then I'm going to get my straight line tool. I know this is a horizontal line at negative 3. And I believe it's supposed to be solid line. Yep. And so I'm going to my y intercept and say I've got to shade everything on this side of the line. Is negative 3, 2 a part of this solution? Well, let's go over and graph that point. And since it falls in the shaded area, you would say, yes, indeed, it is a part of the solution. What if I give you x is less than negative 1? Now, you should know that when you're talking about two variables, x is less than negative 1 is a vertical line with no slope. So first, let's determine what kind of line we're going to use. And since it is x is less than, that means a dashed line. So I want you to actually write down the word dashed when you are looking at an inequality. Then, shading. Now this is a little bit different because there is no y-intercept on a vertical line. So I'm going to look at my equation. x is less than negative 1. Less than means to the left. So I'm going to shade left. So it's not up above or below when you have a vertical line. It's left or right. So now I'm going to negative 1 on my x-axis and make it a nice big fat point. Then I'm going to get my line tool, make a nice line, didn't do a very good job there, and I have to make that line dashed. 
Maybe I will. And I'm going to shade to the left. Now, is negative 3 a part of this solution? I'm thinking it is. Let's plot that point. Yep, it falls in the shaded area. So yes, it is. All right, the very last thing I'm going to ask you to do is to write an equation or write an inequality from a graph. So I'm going to have you look at the graph and write the inequality. Well, no. Sorry about that. Know that you're going to write it in slope intercept form. But the difference is that you're not going to use an equal sign. So let's figure out what kind of sign we are going to use. It is a solid line, so I know that there has to be a line underneath, and it is shaded below the y-intercept down here, so it's going to be less than or equal to. Now, I need to figure out what my slope is. So let's go over here and look at some points, like this point and this point. So I'm saying a rise of 1, a run of 1, and my line is going down, so a negative 1 slope. I'm going to add my x, and now let's figure out what my y-intercept is. It's right here at negative 1, so this is going to be minus 1. So the equation for this graph is y is less than or equal to negative 1x minus 1. Or you could write y is less than or equal to negative x minus 1. All right, I think you have enough to start your homework in Math Excel.